At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming one of our very own, Cindy Lee. Now, she is an NLP trainer, hypnotherapist, self-defense instructor, and awakener. And, you know, she's just, she's been on and off a part of the Liberate family for years. We actually did NLP training together. She's a dear friend. Really happy to have her on. And we're going to be talking about awakening and awareness in regards with self-defense and uh, we're just going to be seeing where this goes. You know how it flows. There's so much knowledge and information that you can share uh, about NLP and all of this other stuff. So let's just see where everything goes. And Cindy, (laughs) welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you. (laughs) Um, So Cindy, uh, I always like when, when, when we start to like get people to know a little bit about how you got to where you were at. Right. You know, like here in your journey, there's so many different modalities that you've studied. And Mm -hmm. and I know that there is knowing you personally. I know that there's always this desire to learn and to grow more. And so a few years will pass and then suddenly like you're a double black belt. And then, like you know, like (laughs) things things just happen. Right. You know, do. Um, So, you know, where did it start for you? in, in this realm of wanting to do things in the healing arts? I was completely dissatisfied working for a porn company, basically. Um, it was an age verification service. And okay. I was just not cut out for normal nine to five type of stuff, like being told, given a list what to do. I wasn't able to use my creativity. I wasn't able to, you know, use the part of me that I love the most, right? Yeah. So um, massage, like that was the first thing that came to my mind. And during massage school, they kept what I know is a suggestion now, kept saying we don't last usually longer than seven years. So I started like, oh my God, what am I gonna do next? (laughs) Ah, interesting. So they were programming that in massage school that most masseuses don't last more than seven years. Yes. interested <laughs> like, like why you know like did they give a reason is it just you know I don't know statistically that's what it was but I'm not sure how much of that wasn't somehow a suggestion because somebody maybe lasted seven years and then you know yeah <laughs> it started to become the norm uh it's like we don't know what we why things are told to us you know it's just and it ends up just being carried on and carried on and then pretty soon it becomes statistically probable because enough people have heard it or went through a certain school right right but so you're you're sitting there you're at your a typical nine to five years there's got to be something else and then you know was there a reason why massage came to mind looking back or it was just like because I could be hands-on and helping people okay I could be hands-on and and making the world feel a little better you know yeah and By the time I was done with a session, people were leaving with a smile, Yeah, you know, so I could contribute to that. They're taking that smile out into the world, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you want to do something a little bit more meaningful, have a little bit flexible schedule, leave an impact, make a difference. And, you know, but while you're in massage school, you're hearing this instructor tell you, you know, people don't last more than seven years. So you're already like thinking in your head. Uh, what else? I was already scrambling, right? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So I don't know what to do. It's been a couple of years since I started massage now. And I come across this book by Candace Pert and it's called how to feel good within parentheses, how to feel God. And she actually described the most beautiful transcendental hypnotherapy session that changed her life. And I'm like, that's it (laughs) because I had the body aspect now I had the I wanted to do the mind aspect Ah. and um I did an internet search and it turned out that I lived in the vicinity of the only at the time accredited hypnotherapy school in the country 
You're so. like, oh, okay, this is a sign. <laughs> See, so I, I love that. I love hearing people's stories because it's oftentimes there's like these seeds that are planted that really like get us on that direction. And when we look back, we see that nothing was really a coincidence. But at the time, we're like, mm-hmm. oh, then we're just going from one place to the next and down this 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 level. Um, but so you get this book, you realize you're drawn to. At that time, have you ever been hypnotized? No, I had one friend who spoke about um, being a hypnotherapist and actually going through HMI. I just didn't relate it. I went back and asked him if that was the school he went to at the time, but that had been my only experience. Okay, so so he had nothing, you know, so it was almost like this calling inside because it was Mm -hmm. like this book resonated with you, but you had no like actual physical experience of it. But there was something that was called in you enough where you were like, okay, well, let me look. Like, how do you learn this? Where do you go to learn this? Yeah. And and then you saw this, that the school was close to you, that it was accredited and the only one in the nation at that time, you know. And so what did you do next? I joined. <laughs> I joined. At that time, I mean, we went to, we went, we went at the same time and, uh, you know, years ago, mm-hmm. uh, but so that that's actually how we met was yes. in, in, in hypnotherapy school and uh but you um at that time there was like the four week free class did you do that because that's how they got me I like I took this four week free class and it was like you could learn how to hypnotize somebody yeah, or yeah. like do I like, think s- it was the like the 101 yeah portion yeah so yeah I Took, but I had signed up before. I was just... Oh, you were already like, know, I, I okay. so kind I, of knew I was doing this already. <laughs> You're like, I've never been hypnotized, but I'm going to go and learn but how to I'm hypnotize. I'm going to go do it. <laughs> so I actually started the schooling and hypnotized somebody before I was ever hypnotized. <laughs> <laughs> and I was pretty good at it, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, eventually... You know, doing research on on hypnotherapy, I came across neuro linguistic programming, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Ooh, what's this?" <laughs> <laughs> so I started looking more into that, and so you know, who the the man who would become my mentor at HMI, he you know, as you know, John McCarthy turned mm-hmm. out to be the NLP guy. Yeah, and I had no idea when I asked him that he was in charge of that. So, you know, it's like you said, things just lined up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And then, and then NLP went into further NLP trainings and tra- mm-hmm. teacher training. And then, he, you know, so then, then you started opening up intuitive gifts too, and being able to do intuitive readings, psychic readings, all of that. I mean, it's kind of like, I had been doing psychic readings for years before, like, but just for friends, never for like income, never for, Mm -hmm. you know, a job career. And well, thanks to you, I got the opportunity to do so and to, you know, open that up a lot more and to help benefit a lot of other people through those means as well. And oftentimes I like combine the NLP with the intuitive readings. Oh, that's great. And so you're, you know, and then, and then where did the, when did the martial arts come into place? Well, it's back. I saw a documentary, like it was probably like 15 years before I actually joined up for Hapkido and it was the philosophy, um, the principle of some, your energy plus my energy equals my energy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, wait, I like that. Your energy or my energy plus your energy equals my energy. <laughs> what's yours is yours, and what's mine, or, or what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. <laughs> exactly. In a way. Yeah. In yeah. a way. Um, it has other practical uses, as I'll map it across in a moment, but. It was, to me, all I heard was, oh, energy. You can do, like, you know, energy in terms of, like, yoga and stuff like that. Or, you know, actually using that physical energy to, you know, work in your physical environment also. And, you know, in the process, learn a skill that gives you more confidence. Learn a skill that gives you more empowerment. And, you know, if you should need 
self-defense. But the truth is, like, I started doing hop keto and I have not really needed to use it because, and I actually, you know, don't have those kind of confrontations at, at all. Like, people don't tend to do that with me. And I know it's in how I carry myself. It's mm -hmm. in, you know, it teaches you a type of leadership that makes you more, like, walk differently in the world, more relaxed, more peaceful, less, you know, if you're tense and like this, people are like, what, what, right? Yeah. <laughs> when you're relaxed, it's like, and I love this quote, I'd rather be a warrior in a farm than a farmer in a war. <laughs> a warrior in a farm than a farmer yes. in a war. Okay, okay. So, like the warrior is confident but at peace in his garden, tending his garden, basically. Oh, I get you, get you. I thought of like a, a random warrior inside of a farm no. field, like battling. And I'm like, okay, that's no, how I envision sorry. it. <laughs> that's the brain fog. <laughs> no, that's, that's me. Like, like oh. a, a warrior in a garden, then, then yeah. a gardener in a war. Yeah. So I used it. And plus it pushes you to... Like I went in going, oh my God, can I even do this? I started when I was 45 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And I started doing things that I never believed I would be able to do. And those were like convincers that what couldn't I do, right? Oh. So it was, it's really a fabulous, like now I'm a second on black belt. And I love- And on your way to your third. On my way to my third. And I will practice the rest of my life. And there is, it doesn't matter. What I love about Hop Keto in particular is that it's, it doesn't, it's not about strength. Like I can teach it to older people who don't have that much strength and there's still places where they can defend themselves. You know, you learn how to fall. So that can even like, as a self-defense, instead of breaking your hip, you can go into the proper like falling techniques. Yeah. So there's a lot of benefits from it. Like if you need to kick open a door, you don't, it's not about violence. It's about your self empowerment. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and it, it's cool. I mean, I took in like you do some self-defense classes here and you know, like just the couple that I've been in and the ability to like take something and go bloop, 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 <laughs> and you like kind of can pull somebody down on the right, ground. And it doesn't take much strength, right? It's yeah. like, Everybody has the ability to take care of themselves, to defend themselves. And I love that martial arts kind of teaches you that you're worth doing that, for, you know, you're worth taking care of yourself. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, like, was there like something that, that caused you to even, even show up at that first class? Like, you know, like what, what, what well, you know, cause I mean, it, in okay. a way now looking at it, you can say, okay, you worked on, helping people's body feel better. Then you worked on being able to reprogram people's thoughts. And then you've been, a, then you worked on strategic kind of processes that can quickly change people's states and make those shifts. And then you were able to kind of go into like the, the spiritual realm and, and pick up on things on an esoteric level. Uh, and then like, then it went to, mastering the physical body for yourself for defense and, and protection it was a, it's kind of an interesting like like leap yeah it all makes sense in my mind <laughs> no no it does it, I mean it makes it's, sense to a certain level but I wonder what was that connecting what was that spark plug or that connecting like area that when was someone like, goes to hypnotherapy they're going to change something that they feel is not working right mm -hmm. Sometimes that's out in the physical world. They don't feel secured. Like yeah. I hear all the time walking to their cars, you know, at night and, you know, like women, they're like, you know, I just stare, you know, I like doom, 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 so that they know that I'm nothing to mess with. And you can see, but that's like deliberate, that's it's, uh, projecting anxiety. Yeah. And it also like, you know, kind of creates something that predators are, you know, paying attention to. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, it's that like kind of that philosophy that a lot of people talk about that the energy that you put out is what you get back. And so if you're, if you're fearful and you're worried that this bad thing could happen, 
is there some part of that so worried about that this mm-hmm. something's going to go wrong something's going to go wrong something bad's going to happen that you actually create the something bad to happen right mm-hmm. you know and I, I mean people uh, you know i know that it's a t- sensitive subject because people feel like oh like i never meant to be a victim or that that somebody like attacks me or this or that and and I get that but if you kind of backtrack just a few steps and you say well you kind of feel that way about like a bad day or about a different things you can say well in some way did you you know you were so paranoid about losing your money or your cash that you actually lost your money and like you wouldn't question that happening right you know but Mm -hmm. when it's when it becomes something that has a little bit more like I don't know, stigma to it, suddenly there's the responsibility doesn't want to be on there, right? You know? Mm-hmm. And so in a in a way, by going through these classes and this different stuff, instead of like like the like how you would describe this woman in the alleyway, like just like staring but projecting the fear and almost drawing attention, right? right. Um, in, in a few moments or a few moments prior, you had said that like if you're walking around the world and you're like relaxed and you're not tense, you kind of versus if you're tense you kind of create this like energy right Mm -hmm. uh that becomes noticeable more and i've actually in teaching self-defense inadvertently it was therapy for that other person well yeah because they got to actually confront something bad that did happen to them in reality and that's because there's a reason why most people are fearful whether Mm -hmm. something happened to a friend or somebody they know or whether that happened directly to them Exactly. And and most women, in fact, I've never had a single woman say they haven't had something of some sort happen, whether in the office or in a party or or some unwanted like move towards them. So this gives them something to do about it. And if you have been through something, it can actually help release it out of your body and give you that sense of empowerment that you didn't have that resource before, you know? And, and with your self-defense, I mean, there's, you, you bring in your double black belt going on third black belt experience. You bring Mm -hmm. in all of the martial arts, but you also bring in something else that's really special. And that is the NLP. Mm -hmm. Can you tell, tell everybody a little bit about how you bring in, first off, what is NLP? And then, because maybe (laughs) some people might know that are listening, but if people are tuning into this podcast because they hear about self-defense or, or, you know, stuff like that, it, maybe they don't know. They might not have even heard. What are these three, you know, right. continent or constant. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> yeah. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And it's like a verbal and nonverbal way that we communicate. And it works in our values and beliefs. And, um brain fogging i'm sorry um (laughs) um, it works in our our our, how we do what we do our values and and our belief systems and so like in self-defense for instance i've started asking people what is your mission what is your Mm -hmm. goal with you know in regards to you know knowing self-defense and you know it's like when you get off work at 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 night what is your mission and most people will say you know to get home safely to Mm. go to my family and then one day they like see something happening to somebody else and they want to go and be the hero Mm. they might not have the skills they might have the skills i don't know but their mission statement was to get home to their family. So if they stop to go help somebody else, they're putting themselves in harm's way. They're not on that mission statement and they can often hesitate. Mm. So bad things could happen to them. And they don't really even know who they're defending when they could have just ran away and called the cops and not been part of that and not gotten hurt themselves and not been a loss for their family, for instance, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, Psychogeography is another thing that I add to it in self-defense because how you hold yourself, the position you hold yourself is communicating volumes of language. Um, one of the hardest things I actually have, I like spend a lot of time training is to 
get the laughter out, to get the shyness out. Mm. Because what you practice in the class is actually what you're likely to do in the real world. You know, it's like, you know, in hypnosis that you say 21 times is a, is yeah. a pattern. And if the patterns that you also practice is what's going to come out. So um, teaching voice projection. So it's not what you say. You can tell someone you farted. And as long as it's in a voice that means business and distraction, mm -hmm. if you say something like I farted, that actually like pauses them for a second and gives you a moment to do something. Yeah. So. Those so, so you're kind of like you're you're bringing in this awareness of how people kind of are in the world, right? And you're kind of bringing out the value systems to uh, create motivation or clarity and strength in that. You're helping them understand maybe how reactions and impulses might work. And so you're kind of teaching the psychology of somebody mm -hmm. so that they don't have to use sometimes all the techniques because if they know some of those, they can, they can maybe have that space, right? They can use that as like a buffer for distraction for two seconds to be able to get away or to be clear on what, why it, are they in that moment at all, right? And, you know, or maybe what they choose to do, right? Because you said, you know, maybe it's somebody being a hero, but maybe it's even in, in the defending their self. You know, if the goal is, you know, they want to get home to their family, they just want peace and they want everybody to be safe. You know, sometimes, you know, and I've, I've been in those positions, I'm sure every single person that has, has, is watching this, there's at certain times you lose track of what it is that's important to you when you get set off and triggered. Because there's a point where you're having a, a, a defensive reaction, but then there's a point where you get like angry and triggered and that anger and that rage mm -hmm. turns into, you know, screw you, I'm going to attack you instead of right. like, what's the objection there it's it's to you know get away i mean you see this happen with sometimes people with road rage right you know right. like it's like okay somebody cuts them off and then suddenly now that other person wants to get around them and cut and shut and you know and do this like back and forth and it's like is that really helpful like you know if you got clear on like you just want to get home safely or to work safely or this or that is is you now trying to get even with somebody that you know is that helping <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And hypno, not hypnotherapy. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. No, no, but NLP with mixed with martial arts. But NLP mixed with martial arts makes a more well-rounded understanding and awareness. Like you want environmental awareness. You want um, your physical awareness. Like you don't want somebody to back you up into a wall if you can help it. And you want to know if like maybe there's other people around that are with this person, you know, like so understanding, you know, really quick those like signs, which NLP actually helps you observe and like enhance your environmental awareness. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Press that little button, the red one, you know, the one, just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. And I'm just thinking about through NLP training and stuff like that, even being able to take in more visually, right? And so teaching people to be able to take in a little bit more of their surroundings, like you were saying for, uh, mm -hmm. you know, are they alone? Are there people around? What, where is the, or where is the nearest exit or, or a crowd of people that if you can just move, maneuver to, you know, a more aware space. And to be clear, this does not promote violence. It's not about having the fight. It's about getting out of one. It's about not having the fight and getting out of it using physical self-defense as a last resort. Yeah. You want if you can run, run. It doesn't make you, it doesn't prove anything to beat someone else up. Yeah. Just because they're bad people, you don't have to be. Yeah. So it's really about safety, which is like going into a personal story, how I started thinking. It's like 
back when I first saw that documentary with Hapkido mm -hmm. and the principal of some, I was then married mm -hmm. and he was one of those people who did everything in their power to keep me from doing things, to keep me from anything that I loved, to, you know, it was like a lot of gaslighting mm. and a lot of like, you know, not very nice behaviors towards me. So one day after hypnotherapy, I realized that this was not a good situation. And I left and uh, it took me a couple of years, but then it started to come back. Oh yeah, I wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah. And so hypnos I called um, hypnotherapy, the, the, the uh, grandmaster song, um, Hapkido. And um, I was, it was kind of like at the hypnotherapy school. That's why I'm like getting the words mixed up because yeah. it was the same thing. It's like, I went down, he had a three day free trial, but I was just kind of like, sign me up. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Cause I had put off my life 15 years and coming out of that marriage, I actually started uh, getting like people who had been through narcissistic abuse and, you know, a lot of hard angled relationships. And I think that also helped strengthen why I went into martial arts. So like yeah. I said, in my mind, I can see how they all connect. <laughs> no, it's, it's perfect. But I love that you have this ability to just jump into things. Like there's like this uncanny trust that you have to listen to where you're guided. And, you know, in both of the, and actually in all three of the experiences, mm -hmm. and even in, if we could argue the fourth, when you just allowed yourself to dive in with like doing readings too, but that, you know, you had this feeling about massage school, it just was that, it signed up. Then it was knowing, you know, seeing that book and being aware of hypnosis and saying, okay, I'm ready. And that and you signed up before the four week, you know, course, it was just, I know I'm here, you know, like, yeah. you know, like for somebody like me, I'm like, well, let me make sure this is right. Like I'll sign up I'll, after I experience this to see if I actually <laughs> want to do it. But then, and then, you know, you had another ability to have a three day trial that you didn't even need. You were just, I'm ready. Just sign me up. I'm in it. I'm jumping in. And so that tells a lot about who you are, that you want to dive in, you want to immerse yourself into those experiences. And then, and then you get those results, right? You know, for NLP, you didn't just do an NLP course here or there, but you went all the way to become a, a trainer so that you can train other people in NLP. And, you know, the same, like with martial arts, it's like, now mm -hmm. you keep on going and you're about to get your third black belt. It, it was like from one class to mastery. It's like, let me, really dive in and explore what this has to offer yeah i love that thank and you and so you can bring that ability to share that with with your students right and i know that you have a, a story of like i mean people let, love to hear of like the the self-defense in action right you know so <laughs> i know you have a story of a time when you had to use your your uh <laughs> your your self-defense and martial arts skills. Do you want to share that with everybody? Yeah, well, thankfully, I didn't really have to actually hurt anybody. But I heard somebody. I was in my bed, and it sounded like somebody walking around my bedroom window. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I look at my security camera. It's like, what, 3.30 a.m. in the morning. And I look at my security camera, and I see that a guy had walked by but didn't come back. And I was like, oh, he's still there. Unless he, there's a back gate. So, you know, I had to go check. And so I had my short staff and. What's a short staff? It's, it's a stick that's about uh, that long. And, you know, it's like, it's easier to maneuver. It's like, there was no need for like a big, like, or. Okay, okay. You know? so, so when you think about the traditional martial arts where they have the stick, so this yeah. is like a little one. Okay, okay. It's like, Just so everybody knows. It's like a little one. Um, I like cane a lot too. That was, but that was, the stick was like more readily, like in my sight. So that's uh -huh. the one I grabbed. And I took my time. I put some proper clothes on. And I did not put shoes on because I did not want him to hear me coming around the corner and the, the, you know, crunching leaves and stuff. So I 
get close because I don't know if he has a weapon or not, right? It's mm -hmm. not about being unsafe. So I take a little peek around the corner, but if he had a weapon, I would have hit him right then and there. He did not. Um, he had something else in his hand. <laughs> so I actually like hit the wall. Boom! And he's like, whoa! And so one thing that I've learned is those kind of guys do not like um, loud. They don't like being in the open. They don't like being seen. They do their work, um, you know, tiptoeing, shadowing, and, and, you know, what's the word? Like the FBI would call them inadequates because they're not, they don't feel confident enough to actually take you straight on. So they'll stalk you instead. Mm. Right. And so he's like going like this. I'm like, zip up your pants. I'm the one going calm for him because he's like, I've, I've just put him into his bad state. Right. Yeah. And I don't know how my neighbor above me didn't bother. He claims he didn't wake up, but my neighbor on the other end upstairs was like, Cindy, are you okay? I'm like, this blah, 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 is jacking off at my bedroom window. And I'm like, like loud, right? At this hour. And he's like, ma'am, I was peeing at your window. And I'm like, and you know what? You're still at my window. <laughs> <laughs> and so I walk him out the back gate and I walk halfway down the alley and I can see he's walking slow because he's afraid I'm going to chase him if he, you know, but that's not my mission statement. My mission statement is just get him out so I can go back to sleep, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't going to chase him, but he walks slowly because that animal instinct to like run. Yeah. And he gets down the end of the block and boom, he's like out of there. And that was the end. Like I posted it on the neighborhood app to warn others. Well, interesting though, like, but in hearing your story, I can hear how like you've taken in the NLP with the martial arts training, the knowing mm -hmm. that your mission statement is, hey, I don't need to cause harm to people, but I want the threat away and I want to go to bed. And so you notice that he mm -hmm. wasn't as big of a threat when you were there. You were aware of your surroundings. You created a loud noise aversion and understood the psychology and how somebody would respond. Well, and with that shocked him. But you knew that you had the confidence that if he tried anything, you would knock him down to the ground. So, like, you, you had that ability to have mm -hmm. that. And you, you, you just allowed that to be. I did turn the tables. He was terrified of me. Yeah. And um, you have to use, like, you know me. I'm usually pretty, like, late, easygoing, right? Mm -hmm. But in cases like that, they don't understand. People like that don't understand nice language that's like if you start showing agreeableness or conscientiousness those are things predators love because that's what they look for conscientiousness is a sense of duty and agreeableness mm -hmm. is like yes so if you get rid of that you know lower that piece for a moment my conscientiousness was in that i didn't need to kill him today mm -hmm. like i wasn't that much in danger that i needed to do any damage to him yeah you know, so that's where my conscientiousness was applied Yeah. instead. I like that. But it, it giving you the ability to have that, I mean, there's, in the couple classes that I've taken, you have so much, like, that you you can teach for defense. Yeah, you know? so much. Like, and you're, t and, I mean, people can come at you and if they're hitting you or they're this, the blocks, the op but using the other people's force. And that's mm -hmm. what I, I like about the classes that you put on is you're taking all this martial arts, but you're taking NLP, you're taking psychology, you're taking an understanding of human suggestibility. You're, you're bringing that all in and saying, how do you get the result of safety, security, and the ability to protect yourself so you can walk around being confident, right? And then we even had like at one of the classes, there was like a, like a younger teenage girl, maybe like 12 or 13 in the class, yeah. being able to learn the moves mm -hmm. just in, you know, taking down some of the 
bigger adults in the room, right? You know, exactly. And and so it it doesn't matter. The size is irrelevant, right? And that the no. self defense is good for men. It's good for women. It's good for everybody. And that ability to learn, so that you know, the world's getting the world's becoming crazy. I I don't know, like it, you know, every day it's becoming a little bit more sketchy. There's more and more, you know, people can live in denial, but there's poverty is growing up. People are becoming more desperate. Desperate times call for you know. Just yesterday, we got broken into in the back, we ripped open the. We have like a shed storage area. You know, people are, you know, they're going to do these things. The break-ins, I had a, I had a friend, you know, and I'm not saying these things to scare people, but hopefully incite people that, hey, there's a solution. There's these classes that are three days a week here that you can come to and learn. And you can start to prepare now for maybe you never have to use it. Maybe the times won't be as threatening, but at least you have the security that you can walk anywhere in any place and know that you're okay. I mean, I think that that's invaluable, just the confidence piece and that, the healing work that can come out of it. If, if you're saying almost every single woman that you've encountered has had a traumatic experience happen, you know, like that means at least for the women, and I don't know how many of the men, like even just the healing come off of that time when you felt uh, vulnerable or you felt powerless to heal that aspect of your past, right? Yeah. But I mean, look what's going on here, you know, it, especially in California and Los Angeles, but I mean, Poverty is going, cost of living is, is increasing, job losses is, is constantly plummeting, you know, like mm-hmm. people don't have the resources. And then you have the other problem that's happening that is what I feel like another epidemic is the drugs. I mean, fentanyl and meth are insane right now. Insane how much fentanyl and meth are on the streets. And that creates people to be crazy absolutely mm-hmm. outside of their mind on some of these drugs right yes. and if they're outside of the on their mind they're a and little it, bit more it can also actually increase their strength because of the adrenaline so understanding like the non-resistance part of like self-defense is actually quite useful for that there's places on the body that there there's no amount of strength that's going to like stop that from working oh that's great so mm-hmm. not only if so, so if somebody's coming in thinking that they're he you know like he man or maybe it's a he woman i mean the attacker can be a woman too right you know mm-hmm. but like in it yeah to be able to if somebody is really really strong and outweighs you or has this mm-hmm. force or just believes that they're superman right what can you do for it and there's mechanisms and the beautiful part it's like We've taught this to older people, you know, because like women in their 80s are, they look at the news, they get attacked, usually by the younger guys, because the younger guys feel like they're easier to attack and they're opportunists. The older guys actually attack younger ones because they're easier to attack. So um, understanding those, those factors and understanding that there is actually something you can do about it. Yeah. That you don't have to become that, you know, you don't have to be a victim. You don't yeah. have to be. And um, there are actually things of for any age to, like, protect yourself. I think it's... And empower yourself. It's so smart. I mean, I think it's needed more than ever. I mean, the other day my friend told me that uh, just in Hollywood, one of her friends... Had a, just had a, like a house, but you know, in center Hollywood, and even had bulletproof windows, right? Because it's Hollywood, right? But it's not Hollywood's not that bad, but it is kind of sketch some parts. Yeah. But she got broken into. She ran to her bathroom. The person uh, was saying they were gonna kill her. Tried to break down the bathroom door. She had her phone. She was able to call the police. Luckily, they got there just in time. The guy was out of his mind on drugs. She had no connection to this individual. Mm-hmm. But, you know, had she not found her way into the bathroom and held off and had her cell phone or whatever, she would have been dead, right? You yeah. know, because she didn't have the tools to defend herself, right? 
You right. know, so it's like... And sometimes like, even if you know, like, I'm going to run if I have yeah. the opportunity. I'm not going to engage if I don't have to. Of course. I mean, why would we want to engage? But knowing that, you know, like if there's, you have to get out and this is like you're locked in, let's say like a kitchen area and you have to get out and you have to move beyond somebody, like... Mm -hmm. How are you going to do it, right? For me, how going in the bathroom would be preparing for how I'm going to strike him. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, these situations happen, like, every yes, day. And they it's, do. It's, and it's not to mention to be, like, fear-mongling. You and, shouldn't and, think and you're safe because you're in a so-called safe neighborhood. Because yeah. predators go everywhere. Well, yeah, and, and it goes on to what we were saying earlier. It's not saying, like, let's be super fearful and draw that awareness to us, but more along the lines of how do you prepare, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's about preparing, knowing you're okay, and then not having to worry or think about it on a daily well, basis. Well, it's like preparing for an earthquake, right? You don't know if one's going to come or not, but you prepare. You're ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> and this is kind of like an earthquake because it can be quite traumatic yeah. in that sense, like yeah, more you, devastating than an earthquake, truthfully, because. Yeah, you do the drills and, you know, you learn the exit routes, you learn what you're supposed to do in school, like mm -hmm. you, whether it's fire drill or or earthquake or hurricane or tornado where I grew up. But like you go and you go through these processes mm -hmm. of preparation just so that when it, something happens, there doesn't need to be a state of panic and freeze, right? Because a lot of people will freeze. I and actually think of my martial arts as spiritual development. So <laughs> I like that. Because what do you get from spiritual development? Empowerment, confidence, leadership, all the things that, that <laughs> I was just, just going to ask you. Like, oh, I know that's so good. So, and it shows you that you value yourself. You're doing something enough. It's like I referred back to NLP being, you know, your beliefs and values. Well, you're adding yourself into that value system. Yeah. I love it. And so it's something to do for you, you know, and also to have that awareness. It's like if you don't want to be super, if it's not about drawing in and being super prepared to knock somebody over, you think a threat, like you said, mm -hmm. the, the, the personal development, the confidence, the healing work from past trauma right. or, you know, feelings of vulnerability and having that. I mean, it's something that. It's kind of like everybody should learn how to balance their checkbook. I mean, I don't know that a lot of people use checkbooks anymore. Balance their accounting, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, for their debit card. Right. But, <laughs> and, but, you know, like in, in that there needs to be some oh, more awareness on finances and financial stability and stuff like that. But there also needs to be about how do you protect yourself? How do you take care of yourself? How do you understand other people and, you know, the ability to disarm disengage or escape and things like that i mean i i feel like it's a skill that i don't understand why it's not fundamental and another um really brilliant thing that was kind of like therapy for me with the martial arts part is you're play acting violence every day you're t you know it's like you're not hurting anybody because it's a safe environment i explained that so, you know, we're working in a sanitary environment and I want to put, um, and you know, I'll start adding stress as you know, I like what, ah, like, right. Yeah. And to start adding a little bit of that stress, but everybody knows in the class that they're safe. Yeah. Right. And because I was in that safe place, you know, it's like, we're going through these motions, going through sparring, hitting punching bags and stuff that, that physical stress from the day, the anger issues that I had, whew, yeah, they left my body and, you know, they just kind of dissipate there. It's not like it's going into everybody else there because they're also letting it go. We're all like letting it go together. Mm. And we actually acted more peaceful in the world because of that. So it actually had another another added like gift of of um, releasing and relaxing and rejuvenating. I love that. Mm hmm. No, that's so good. It's kind of like we're back into your, your first modality of massage and how like when you press a certain trigger point or so, like people can release, but it's like, this is mm -hmm. like this process of movement and buildup and release of energy and projection of energy is super therapeutic. 
Mm -hmm. And balancing. It's very balancing. Um, and especially the combination of them all, all together. Like, I probably, it's not like I'm going, let me, you know, going into the intuitive reading during the self-defense, but there's a deep level of intuitional work. Yeah. So that you can understand the difference between fear and anxiety. Because anxiety is like fear of something you're imagining, right? It's not happening right now, but fear is that thing. And then when you have that fear, is it like raising the hairs? What is there, you know, yeah. warning you? Because that's a warning yeah. that you need to be aware of something. So like all of these, it, like the intuition of martial arts and, and the training of martial arts is really deep. And there's a lot of stuff I like, you know, I've studied micro expressions and stuff too. So like, I like to go in and, and teach the micro expressions so that like, what muscles do you need to activate to like look more serious, to look like confident, to look, you know, mm. while you're in the process of, because if you step forward and you're like, no, versus please don't. Yeah. You very know? different expression and one the person takes you serious mm -hmm. if they can read those unconscious cues and and predators typically don't want somebody difficult they're looking for easy they're opportunists yeah oh so good cindy <laughs> where can people find you right here at liberate yourself yes so you're <laughs> here um but also uh, website, social media, handles, anything else you want to share? Working on it. Working on it. Okay, so we'll add them down below later on. We'll edit it in. But you, she is here uh, three days a week. One of the self-defense classes a week is just for women only. Uh, so it's a safe space that women can just come and be and do the self-defense. The other ones, it can be a uh, mixture, uh, doesn't matter, men, women, but even in the women's one, it doesn't matter if you come with somebody that's younger, maybe a younger sister, if you have a daughter or something like that, mm -hmm. that you also want to bring. It's all ages. Um, each of the classes are designed, you know, you can come to as many, you know, repetition is the mother of skill, right? So like if you, with this, you, it's about practice, practice, practice. Yes. And, uh, so, you know, ch check it out. Come, you know, your first class is always free. And if you haven't come to um, any of our wellness classes, but we have unlimited, we also offer some other different um, uh, classes that can supplement some other areas, whether the Pilates or yoga or meditation and, and whatnot. So you can get your self-defense training on and, and building that self-empowerment and that confidence and all of the other things as well. Cindy's also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions, you can do some hypnos hypnotherapy work, NLP work, combination of the both, or or even get some in intuition and see where things are at for a higher perspective. And also with that added benefit of being able to shift some of your state around things, you know, because a lot of times when somebody comes in and if you've ever come in for a reading, you're in that, that space of, mm -hmm. of feeling like maybe, uh, not as confident, a little bit of weakened, and you're looking for validation and support, but how do you get that clarity, but also shift into a state that's a little bit more resourceful, and that's something that Cindy specializes in. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, for everybody that's joining in, if you are listening to this, please do us a favor. Check us out on YouTube. We're trying to build that audience as well. Uh, of course, don't abandon the audio-based platforms. We love that you listen to us wherever you are, driving or or whatnot. But um, check out the visual one as well. You The uh, added benefit of the visual ones is that we also make shorter videos that are st uh, some of the best modules of this that you can share and just watch or get that information. Um, and so that's also available on YouTube too. Thank you so much. And until next time, have a beautiful day. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. 
Uh, also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self. You are S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.